What is the bioeconomy? You've heard of bio yogurt, bio moisturizer, and bio detergent. Why not try bioeconomy? But what is it? Policymakers have used the term bioeconomy for over 30 years. They define it as using renewable biological resources like crops, forests, animals, and microorganisms to produce food, materials, and energy. Growing concern over fossil fuel impacts has accelerated interest in the bioeconomy. Will it save us from climate catastrophe? Or are we just slapping a bio sticker on business as usual? Take forests, for example. Here are two wood based products considered part of the bioeconomy wood pellets, burn hot and efficiently, used for energy and heating. Wood insulation, fitted on walls to help stop heat escaping. On the surface, both sound promising a biological resource that can help replace fossil fuels and reduce energy bills. But grouping everything under bioeconomy can hide some inconvenient truths. Let's say we want to heat a three bed house in Germany. We could burn pellets in a boiler or stove, or we could put wood insulation in our walls. On an average day, we would burn about 2.7 kilograms of pellets, or about 1,000 kilograms per year. To insulate, we'd take 3,700 kilograms of timber. Which sounds like a lot, but after 35 years, whilst the insulation is still going strong, we would have burned through 35,000 kilograms of pellets. What about the carbon footprint? After 35 years, heating your home with pellets has a climate impact 21 times greater than insulation. In fact, burning timber releases more CO2 per unit of energy than fossil fuels, or insulation stores it. And when you insulate something, you use less energy keeping it warm. Burning wood also produces fine particulates linked to asthma and other health issues, while insulation doesn't. But what about the financial costs? You'd assume this costs more, right? Well, no, it's currently cheaper to heat your home with pellets than to insulate it, even after 35 years. This isn't just a fun thought experiment. How we use wood really matters. In 2023, the world lost an area of forest almost as big as Italy. And in 2024, deforestation released 1.7 billion tons of CO2, nearly double the emissions from global air travel. We need to transition away from fossil fuels, and biological resources have a role to play in that. But they have limitations too. And if we exceed them, the consequences could be just as catastrophic. So we need to make careful choices about how we use them. Treating everything bio as equally sustainable ignores major differences in carbon emissions, resource use, and health impacts. So maybe next time someone sells you the bioeconomy, ask to read the small print.